Hi guys, I'd like to welcome you to my second video. Uh, you're going to have to forgive me because I'm going to read out something here because it's too complicated to try and just think of it and explain it off hand. So before I address anything more about Comet Ison and Comet Sighting Spring that's due in October 2014, I want to address the most fundamental question that most people are asking me. And that is, does extraterrestrial life begin or live or exist in the first place? I'm going to share with you some information that was given to me by a genius cosmologist who is no longer with us. Now, in order to understand extraterrestrial life, it is first vital to understand the universe in which it is contained. Our universe is not the source. The best way to explain this is to imagine a Russian doll. You open the Russian doll and inside it you find another one and so on and so on. Our planet is in the solar system, our solar system is in the galaxy, our galaxy is within our universe. Do you think it ends there? Well, it doesn't. Now, our universe is within a multiverse, which I'm sure you've probably heard before and that is pretty accurate. But our multiverse is also within something else called, for arguments like the spectrum. Each universe within the spectrum is connected to its own source, known as Opia. Now, Opia is an unimaginable power source that feeds each multiverse with an unlimited supply of energy. Sorry, my phone. One second. <clears throat> Sorry. Now, I know this is a lot to take in and to understand, and I'm going to work on graphics in order to kind of explain this more accurately. So let's make it a little bit more simple for now. So we're going to start with the logical stuff. So the universe that we're in is 13.8 billion years old. The reason it popped into existence then and not 100 billion years ago is because it was created within an already existing multiverse, which is far older. The question here is about time. When, does, when do things start? Why would this universe come into existence just 13.8 billion years ago when there's an infinitive amount of years potentially possible of course forever so the universe is much older much like our planet is created basically in the universe our universe was created within a multiverse and that would explain the big bang it's basically the the creation of a planet or a star or whatever within our own universe except it was our universe creating in a multiverse so to prove life exists in the universe does not require drake theories basically or it doesn't require us saying, look, we're here, this is proof. It's literally found in one question that most people don't seem to ask. And that question is, what is the function of the universe? Everything has a function. The stars, the planets, your heart, your brain, gravity, the bees that pollinate, the asteroids that pollinate, the moons that govern oceans. Everything works and lives within laws that all produce function at their end. So I ask you, what is the function of the universe? There are two functions. The first is reproduction, as we can see in the vast cosmos, because everything has been produced. The second is clearly to sustain life, whether that be the life of a planet and the life of a galaxy or whatever, or actual life as we know it, biological. We are proof that sustaining life is actually one of the goals of the universe. Another proof to extraterrestrial life is terraforming. Now, I know this is hypothetical, it hasn't happened, but one day we can be sure that mankind will terraform another planet and make conditions similar to those on Earth by releasing maybe greenhouse gases or whatever. Let's assume we don't habitate that planet we terraform, but we create conditions for life. Most scientists would agree that in time, life would probably emerge in those conditions naturally. Now, the question then is, is this life extraterrestrial or man-made? Now, remember, we only created the conditions, we didn't create the life. Well, we may have created conditions, but life creating spontaneously was not our decision in that case. So therefore, any life that might emerge, even in a controlled environment that we've created, would have to be extraterrestrial in origin, definition-wise. It's not us that creates life, it's the universe. It's not us that clones sheep. It's the laws of the universe that allow us to clone sheep. So everything that we do and everything that's possible is first made possible by the existence of the universe and what it allows and what it creates. Now, the most important thing I have to tell you in the universe is 
Probably it is. It's called the law of multitudes. There is not one single star, there is not one single planet, or moon, or galaxy, or black hole, or gravity, not one planet with just gravity, or one sun that does not shine. The universe operates within strict laws, and as a result, nothing can be a once-off. There must be a multitude of anything the universe produces, because anything it produces is made within the limits of strict coding that the universe abides by. Therefore, it is not plausible that we are alone or a one-off, because the law of multitudes would not allow for that. Now, I know this is uh, maybe a little bit hazy for most people, what I've just explained, but maybe have a think about that. And if you can think of something that is singular within the universe, now, I don't mean you can't just say we're singular because we are the only life we know. Let's leave that to one side, obviously. But of anything else in a general term, like... A planet or a star can you tell me one thing that is singular that is not a multitude of other things that were created a lot like similar within the universe if you can think of something post it in the comment box i can't imagine there's anything out there that exists solely uniquely on its own nor do we